Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about Taoism and how it literally hacks your brain to naturally increase your dopamine. And we're going to show how Taoists have known and been using this trick more than 2,000 years before science even started to catch on. I sound like I'm selling a scam. Oh well. Okay, anyway, so dopamine. As a lot of you probably know by now, dopamine is one of the main chemicals in our brain that governs pleasure and motivation. Whenever we enjoy something, or even when we think about something in the future that we expect to enjoy, dopamine is released. However, our brains don't have an endless supply of dopamine to release at any time. Because of this, things that tend to spike our dopamine, such as food, sugar, or pleasurable activities, or even dopaminergic drugs, often tend to be followed by a characteristic dopamine crash afterwards. Our brains also get used to pleasurable activities. This is why when people try to use drugs or sugar or other things to artificially spike their dopamine, they often require more and more of that same thing in order to get the feeling. Now, all of this being said, scientists have found that there are ways to naturally increase your dopamine without getting the crash afterward. And here's where we get into Taoism. If you guys have followed the channel for a while, then chances are you've probably heard me talk a lot about learning to accept circumstances in your life, especially the ones you can't control, and how doing this leads to increased contentment and overall life satisfaction. This is one of the main principles of Taoism, but it's only recently that science has been coming across similar findings. Taoists have understood for centuries that one could learn to be content even in the midst of adversity, and science is catching on too. As we've been able to learn more about the brain over recent years, We've come to understand a lot about the circuitry inside our brain that causes us to feel a sense of reward or pleasure. The dopaminergic pathway mostly involved in reward is called the mesolimbic system. We talked a lot about the mechanics of how this all works in last week's video, but in this video I want to take it a bit farther, because here's one of the most impactful things we've learned about this system. It includes parts of the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of your brain in charge of planning and decision making. This means that we have a certain level of conscious control over how we feel about and associate with circumstances in our lives and the tasks we are doing. Now, this does not mean that we get to choose not to feel pain, or that we get to choose to feel good all the time. In last week's video, I explained why it's physiologically impossible for the brain to feel good all the time. Nor is Taoism concerned with feeling good all the time. Taoism acknowledges the reality of pain and suffering in this life, and does not try to pretend like it doesn't exist. Taoism is about achieving radical acceptance of the things that you can't control in your life, and about taking charge of the things that you can control, without forcing them to be something they aren't. So, what does this mean for your brain circuitry? Well, in order to answer that question, I would rather just turn to somebody who knows a lot more about it than I do, Andrew Huberman. If you don't know Andrew Huberman, he's a professor of neuroscience at Stanford University, who hosts an amazing podcast called the Huberman Lab Podcast. In one episode of this podcast, he shared a method that you can use to train your brain to release dopamine even when working on a difficult or unpleasant task. What you find over time is that you can start to associate a dopamine release, you can evoke dopamine release from the friction and the challenge that you happen to be in. This is a system that exists in your mind that exists in the minds of humans for hundreds of thousands of years by which you're not just pursuing the things that are innately pleasurable, food, sex, warmth, water when you're thirsty. But the beauty of this mesolimbic reward pathway that I talked about earlier is that it includes the forebrain. So you can tell yourself the effort part is the good part. I know it's painful. I know this doesn't feel good, but I'm focused on this. I'm going to start to access the reward. You will find the rewards, meaning the dopamine release inside of effort if you repeat this over and over again. And what's beautiful about it is that it starts to become reflexive for all types of effort. In those moments of the most intense friction, you tell yourself, this is very painful, and because it's painful, it will evoke an increase in dopamine release later, meaning it will increase my baseline in dopamine. But you also have to tell yourself that in that moment, you are doing it by choice and you're doing it because you love it. So breaking this down, essentially what Huberman is talking about is that you can consciously choose to substitute a belief that something is too hard or difficult or too unpleasant with a different belief or philosophy. And by doing this, you get the ability to make something difficult much more bearable. This is also a main tenet of Taoism. The biggest difference here is that Huberman suggests using the idea, I enjoy doing this, while Taoism usually uses the philosophy, I can't change this, I don't have to change this, so I choose to accept and be at peace with it instead of trying to change it. And let's be honest, these two philosophies kind of both have a place in our lives. In life, there are two kinds of unpleasant things. There are unpleasant things that happen to you, and unpleasant things that you have to do. The ones that happen to you are best addressed with the second philosophy, assuming they are indeed out of your control. And the things that require action on your part can be addressed with the first philosophy. 
Because like it or not, there are some things in life that are unpleasant that we still have to do. Remember, the Taoist principle of non-action is not the same as inaction. Taoism recognizes that there are some things in life that we just have to get done. In addition to teaching and writing his philosophies, I guarantee you that Lao Tzu had to get up every day, cook his food, clean his clothes, and perform all the necessary tasks required to live and function as a human being in a physical world. Some of these tasks we find inherently pleasant, and some of them we don't, unless we train ourselves to perceive them as such. Remember that Taoism encourages us to seek to attain a state of nature, where we are in harmony with nature and what it does. Nature doesn't force things, but it isn't ugly or disorderly either, as any system characterized by inactivity certainly would be. If you devoted yourself to complete and utter inaction, it wouldn't be long before you and your place of living would become unpleasant, unsightly, and full of disorder. But this is not how nature is. Nature is beautiful, harmonious, and organized. And it's kept like this because all the different components that make it up have a job to do, which they perform almost unfailingly. Imagine a world in which animals cease to hunt, trees stop providing oxygen through photosynthesis, and cells stop dividing. The world as we know it would utterly cease to exist within minutes. In order for nature to be nature, every single part of it has to do its job. We humans are not exempt from this. If we are part of nature, then we also have roles to perform. The only difference is that we humans have the blessing, or perhaps the burden, of conscious thought and emotion, and because of this we sometimes disidentify with our own nature and role. As far as we know, we alone experience greed, fear, anger, laziness, and self-rejection, and because of this, we often manage to become catastrophically dissociated with nature. Herein lies the value of Huberman's suggestion. It's extremely valuable as a sort of bridge to bring yourself back into the duties that are associated with human life, so that you can relearn to perform them in an effortless way. I don't think that this suggestion is in any necessary way contradictory with that of Taoism. It's only contradictory if one attempts to use the Huberman suggestion as a way of trying to force things more effectively, instead of as a means to enter the state of Wu Wei. Because when you're in Wu Wei, sometimes called the flow state, you can still be tackling all kinds of difficult tasks, it's just that you're not perceiving them as difficult. You perceive them as challenging, exciting, even enjoyable. The act of forcing is not characterized by the difficulty of the task, it's characterized by whether or not that task actually ought to be done, or else done in the way that it's being done. This is a question that's answered by having an openness and quietness of mind, because when you do this, you can be moved by the gentle influence of that soft inner wisdom and voice that teaches people to be good, useful, and harmonious. There are a lot of different names for this voice, but Lao Tzu called it the Tao. Thanks so much for watching. Peace and blessings.